Right, Will, the King of Recommendations is back. We've got all the pretty horses. We've got Jade City, of course, and some more samurai action. We've got Shogun. I know that you love Sword of Kaigen. What's that blue? What's that blue glow? Um, Will, Will, you've been there for a week. I know you loved it, but you need to read something else now. I can't, Ed. I'm changed. The book hangover rules supreme. Well, in that case, Will, let's talk about it. Warriors, readers, reviewers, lend us your ears. And a huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Thank you to the Pit Fighters, the First Swords, and all of the Bright Stars, Truth and Courage. Hello and welcome to the channel today. I'm Will, this is my brother Ed, and we may look a tiny bit different. I don't think there's do. anything out of the ordinary going on. Oh yeah, it? sorry, I mean this is just a normal day, isn't it? I think let's go to our, our childhood hero, who is someone who's renowned to have carried around swords <laughs> in public. Vigo Mortensen. Of course. Aragorn uh, himself. That's who we want to be. So, we so be. yeah, we've decided to be him, but I've done that because of the sword of Kaigen. Mm -hmm. Actually, me and Ed must really be getting along because he's let me hold one of his beloved weapons. So. Well, there's two reasons. Number one, because you love the sword of Kaigen. You're allowed to Thank hold you. it. And number two, I'm I'm holding the bigger one, which oh. is an accurate reflection. Is it, so, yeah, is so. it in age order? I, will, I wasn't going to say age, age, but that's fine. We'll go age we'll go order. With we'll go with that. Sword of Kaigen is possibly the most well-known fantasy indie published book of all time. It's up there, definitely, but it, I've only just got around to it. It is a standalone, so that is a picture already. Basically, this can be a review telling you to read it, although there will be some things I mentioned that mean it won't be a book for everyone, but it's one that I'm going to try and get everyone to pick up. You read this a few years ago now. Mm -hmm. I've just got around to it and I insisted we have to talk about this, even though everyone basically already has. So this is a review for those who don't know what this is about because it's a spoiler-free review, or if you just want some nostalgia by hearing us talk about our love for this book. We actually have a channel on our Discord dedicated to the Sword of Kaigen now because I just want to discuss all the complexities of this story. But before we get into the depth of the review, I just want to say... Very rarely, I will pick up a book and within the first few pages know that I am going to love it. The passion of the author, the setting, the tone, atmosphere and characters all just immediately blend together to immerse me and I just get this feeling. A few that I've had it with are Dreaming the Hound, Silence of the Girls, The Blade Itself, Empire of the Vampire and then probably this. I think that it's a very elite good few. Good list to yeah, be Yeah, so in. there's many other books I've loved, but ones that I know just from the get-go is a yeah. book for me. And I had that, and I think this just raised the magical feeling of reading this. A few pages in, I was just like, whoa, I am in yeah. for a journey here. But Ed, why don't you tell us a bit of the premise, for those who don't know, about The Sword of Kaigen. Well, The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wong was a book that was that actually won Mark Lawrence's SBFBO many years ago. I remember seeing Sorry. it quite a while ago and I bought it and I put it off because I saw in someone's review that it mentions like technology that would be modern, like video games mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And for me, that was at that time it was a big no no. You know, you don't have if you've got swords you don't have you don't have any of that nonsense you can't. in there, do you? But um but anyway that that I then decided to to bite the bullet to draw the sword uh, yep. as it were and I then dived into the sword of Kaigen and when I read the first page, like Will, I knew that I was going to be in for a journey, a great journey that I was going to be thinking back on often. Uh, the Sword of Kaigen follows two characters who are in a samurai-inspired fantastical world. Um, these two people, it, one of them is a mother, one of them is a son, mm -hmm. and it's following their kind of exploits on this island as there is war approaching. And, uh, you know, Judging by the fact there's a sword on the cover, it's called the Sword of Kaigen. There are swords in it, things do come into play, there is warfare, mm -hmm. and it is the exploration of both of these characters' perspectives, their experiences during this very sudden war. Yeah, it's a military fiction and they're in a military culture. Mm -hmm. But I would say that whilst this is some of the best action sequences I've ever, mm -hmm. ever read, this is more about the political relationship between families, yeah. that internal relationship. You've always got this threat of conflict looming, adding weight and tension to the actions of these family members, including one POV, Masaki, and then her son, Mamoru, who are the two leading POVs. Is it... 
and they're just both fantastic. Misaki, she's had a warrior past, but as she's been married off, she is forced to kind of adopt a kind of housewife role in a very sexist, hegemonic society. Yeah. And so it's that kind of repression of her inner self that she's battling with, which is dealt with so, so well in this book. And then we have her son, who he is the oldest son of a warrior family. And he is known all around the Matsudas. And his father and uncle are two of the greatest warriors of generations. So he's got this pressure to live up to that expectation. But whilst he has this duty to the empire... He begins to find out that everything isn't as honest and laid out as it seems. And so as he discovers that the Emperor may not be as honest as he originally believed, is his kind of motivation and duty going to uphold itself or is mm. that going to shake his entire world? Who and knows? what will he do in the face of conflict coming as well? The strength of this book is the characters. There are many others, but they are all elevated and are brilliant because you are invested in the characters at the heart of it. You don't always like them. There are abhorrent characters here. There's ones that just roll up so much. I don't think there are characters that feel so real that anger me at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's not irritating in a way where they're making stupid decisions. You understand them. And if you don't understand them, you know there is hidden motivation and you come to understand them with revelations later on. There is a specific character I cannot name because of spoilers, but his journey from me despising him every time he's on the page to understanding him, resenting him, somewhat forgiving him. It's a I, roller coaster. Rarely have I felt so conflicted in my emotions mm. for a character, and that is something unique to Sword of Kaigen. Yeah. There are many books that are a roller coaster of emotions, but usually you're quite laid out on who you're supporting, who you want to lose, who are the heroes, who are the villains. But this just really mixed and matched that up. And this is a story of love and loss, heroism and tragedy, duty, sacrifice, and what is important in life. Do you stand for something greater than you? What is it about? Is it about fulfilling your own destiny or do you do what others need you to do for the greater good? Uh, we've heard that phrase before, I haven't have we? Indeed, yeah. It is just a book that is very thought provoking. It has those classic kind of fancy elements of the epic action. It's got a magic system that I really enjoyed and it's got kind of that epic history to it as well but i really love the kind of more modern elements we've got this empire that is a lot of propaganda and there's a lot of corruption and there's a lot of messages that relate to kind of the current standing of the world that relate to this book as ed said it's kind of got modern technology but it didn't really impact me because the portion of the world we're following they are kind of living in the past because of their powers they have kind of just stayed very traditional not embraced the newer elements of life and so it does feel like that kind of traditional fantasy in that aspect but it's really interesting knowing that the rest of the world is so different i think it gives a lot of room to explore in the world and i cannot believe the next book isn't out and there might not actually be a sequel it wraps up brilliantly but i just need more it would be so hard to write book that two. is the thing like that it, it, it feels impossible to yeah. be honest. Uh, it feels like the author really the, uh, Emma Wong really struck gold when she started to write this and I think I think one of the biggest strengths of this book is that it is self-published yeah I feel like if it was trad published it would have been shaped by a lot of other voices by mm -hmm. a lot of other people and you know, thinking of books that have been edited and have been changed and have been, you know, published traditionally by some of the big houses. Yeah. You can see how they're kind of more commercially minded. Yeah. Which I think is something we can all, you know, we'll all admit to. It's a little bit like Hollywood, it's a production, mm -hmm. isn't it, sometimes? And I think the biggest thing that this book has going for it is that it's so incredibly unique in the way that it approaches characters, mindsets, relationships, action. Uh, as well as the way that the plot unfolds. It feels so unconventional, but at the same time, at the heart of it is a a family duo where you have a woman with a past who's being suppressed, you have her son who feels all the pressure to rise to his legendary family, and you have a father who has a completely just kind of abstract relationship with both of those characters. And seeing the way everything plays out is just intense. It's incredible. And the way that these characters act with each other, the way that they think and the way that their relationships develop as the book goes on uh, had had me in tears at some points, had me furious in others, had me happy 
uh, and it is just such a well-written, perfectly crafted book that it feels just perfect as it is. There are a couple mm -hmm. of weaknesses, but I think even including those weaknesses, it's it's something you just kind of ignore. Yeah, because it's such a brilliant book. But I've got to say, the the action is epic. It feels like an anime series. The the imagination is incredible, but mixed in with you know some incredible. Kind of samurai action as well. It's, it's gritty, isn't Look, it? Look, I dark. love the Young Samurai series. Yeah. It's a YA series uh, about a boy learning to become a samurai. Is my dream books as a mm -hmm. child. But those, the action, like set pieces in that, are insane, aren't they? Yeah. This book is it's like watching a Kurosawa film, but throw in some magic, which is just incredible. Um, I absolutely loved it, and I think everyone should try the Sword of Kaigen. You don't have to be into military fantasy if you want to enjoy this because at the forefront, at the heart of it, are these relationships of these characters and they feel so real mm -hmm. and visceral and there is, it, they evoke so much emotion just between these two POVs yeah. and it's just incredible. Uh, I would say kind of, there is a point in the book maybe around, not quite two thirds, but maybe, where would you say? I don't know what. So there's a chapter about. that is one of the best chapters I've ever read. About three quarters of the way. About three yeah. quarters. And I think it should have probably ended there. I would say it kind of tails off. It is in, it's impossible to get the climax as tense the as that. Emotion. So everything after that is kind of dealing with that pivotal moment. So I think maybe if it ended a little bit earlier, maybe some pages were shaved at the end, mm -hmm. it would be a little bit more effective at that point uh, but you kind of don't mind because you just get to be with these characters for a bit longer exactly i was going to say this leads to obviously we've <coughs> loved it but we're reviewers ed we, we mm. want to let people know if they might enjoy this or yeah. not there is a divisive element to this book there's a huge climax at about halfway through and another one at about 75 percent mm. and then it doesn't peter out but it doesn't end with another big bang so i'd say if you're reading this don't be expecting that at the end i was lucky that i didn't i can imagine people yeah. who are because of how epic this is, expecting another final conflict. We're probably left feeling a little bit flat at the end. So for us, it still clicked. There is one or two things that I would have wanted in the ending. I wasn't quite given, but I can see how they might be explored maybe in years to come. But it still far from ruined the ending. It was a fantastic ending and it was very poignant. I think it really hit home. This book, whilst there's a lot of action, it's about the characters and the big moment is the character growth and the character revelations and dealing with what has happened in this book because so much happens. And I think this is the best kind of married relationship I've oh, ever read. Of course. And really in fantasy, there's not much out there where the, where, you know, where we have mm -hmm. a married couple and you see their relationship play out. And I think yeah. that is the best bit of this book for yeah. me. Yeah, so Misaki is in her, I think, early 30s, maybe mid 30s, mm. and she's a married woman. And she's a married woman throughout the book. I don't think I've ever come across a character who is just a married woman from the start. I think that um, I read that Misaki wasn't actually meant to be as prominent in this book as she became because they thought, well, married women aren't the main centre of yeah. books when they they either start and then get married or that they can't find who they're married to and mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, this is very different. And I loved that exploration. Yeah. And it's definitely not a happy marriage. No. As you get very quickly, it's very complex. And I just love the character exploration. Yeah. But Ed, shall we get into our overall thoughts? And uh, then... Yeah. yeah. Overall thoughts. Loved it. Maybe want to buy another Katana. Yeah, basically the same. It's got one of the greatest cast of characters I've ever come across yeah. and I as soon as I finished this I watched two to rambles video on why Sword of Kaigen is a masterpiece and in that they dive into each of the characters Takari, Takashi, Sesuko, Misaki, Mamoru obviously each and every one I realized more and more as I was watching that video how much depth there is to mm. every character I could imagine each one being a POV an essential yeah. character because of how well developed they are it wouldn't have felt out of place but yeah, I absolutely adored it, and thank you for giving me to read it, Ed. And Petrick, I finally read it. Petrick has been advocating the Sword of Kaigen for yeah, absolutely years. He's actually on years. the back, I believe. I think he is, he is yeah. indeed. And yep. so thank you so much for bringing it to He brought it to your attention as well, as, of course, along with many others. But Petrick was one of the first on the train. And I'm going to be raving and raving about this. And Good. as I said, join the Brothers Grin Discord so I can talk to you about it. Please. And it is a standalone, so why not start it now? It is very dark, it's very hard hitting, so wait for a time when you're ready for something that 
it is depressing at times. Yeah. But it's also uplifting in showing the strength of the human spirit as well. Yeah. So there's a big mix and it's a book that I will be just recommending everywhere. So another one that Will's read that I've recommended that you've that enjoyed. We're doing pretty good recently, aren't Tick. we? I think since the Silmarillion, you've been on that upward. Okay, I think there's eight or nine I've recommended you, and Silmarillion was the only one that didn't hit home, and that was just objectively wrong. We so, were, we because were, the well, Silmarillion's amazing. Impossible. Thank you for watching our review of The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wong. Let us know in the comments below, did you enjoy this book? Have you read it? Do you think you might read it now that we've done a little spoiler-free review of it? Please let us know. Hope to see you there. Truth and courage. The Brothers Gwyn. The Brothers Gwyn.